Dear friends, the month of July is traditionally dedicated to the most precious blood of our Lord, the prize of our salvation. Let us continue to reflect on God's great love for us and ponder on our poor love for God with the doctor of love himself, St. Francis de Sales. Chapter 21 How Good Desires Are to Be Fulfilled We ought not to desire impossible things or build upon difficult and uncertain ones. It is not sufficient to believe that God can succor us by all sorts of means, but we must believe that He wills not to employ for that purpose those means which He removes far from us, and that He does will to employ such as are near to us. It seems to me that you have discovered the true root of your evils when you say to me that you think it is a multitude of desires which can never be satisfied. A variety of meats, if they are in too great quantity, always overcharges the stomach, but if it is weak, it is ruined by them. When the soul has been purged of bad and worldly affections, meeting spiritual and holy objects, and feeling, as it were, utterly famished, it fills itself with many desires and with such avidity that it is overwhelmed with them. Ask for remedies of our Lord and of the spiritual fathers whom you have near you. Nevertheless, I will tell you simply what I think on the subject. It is that if you do not begin to put into execution some of these desires, they will be ever multiplying and will embarrass your mind so that you will not know how to get rid of them. You must then come to results. But in what order? You must begin by such palpable and exterior results as are most in your power. For example, You are not without the desire of serving the sick for the love of our Lord, of doing any mean and lowly services in the house for the sake of humility. For these are fundamental desires, and without them all others are and ought to be suspected and despised. Exercise yourself, then, strongly in the production of the results of such desires, for you will have no lack either of occasions or subjects for them. This is entirely in your own power, and consequently you ought to put them into execution, for in vain will you frame purposes of doing actions, the subject of which is not in your own power or is very remote from you, if you do not fulfill those which are within your reach. Carry out, therefore, with fidelity, the desires of the humble and mean offices of charity, humility, and other virtues, and you will see that you are well provided with occasions for them. Magdalene must first wash our Lord's feet, must kiss them and wipe them with the hairs of her head before she can entertain him heart to heart in the secrecy of meditation, and she must anoint his body with earthly balm before she can pour the balm of her meditations on his divinity. It is good to desire much, but we must subject our desires to a certain order and arrive at results each in its own season and according to your power. We prune the leaves of the vine that its humidity and sap may be sufficient for the production of fruit and that its natural force may not be weakened by an excessive growth of leaves. It is good to prune these multiplication of desires, lest our soul amuse itself with them and relax its care to produce results, of which ordinarily the smallest fulfillment is of more value than mighty desires of things remote from our power. God rather desires in us fidelity to those little things which he does place under our control than an ardor for great things which do not depend on us. And always remember to be who you are and to be that well. 
May God bless you for your kind generosity. St. Francis de Sales, pray for us.